So let's talk about leadership for a moment. You heard Liz introduce me referencing my book. I'll give away a few of those at the end of the workshop this morning. I believe, based on my experiences at Ford Motor Company, Oakwood Healthcare, St. John Health System, and running the Comcast University, where we average buying a new company about every 23 days, I learned a lot about mergers and acquisitions in a short period of time, that every part of your business is a reflection of the leadership of your company. Everything. The blinds on the wall, the screens hanging from the ceiling, the lights, the carpet, the paintings, what the lobby looks like, how employees dress, those all in some way, shape, or form come back to decisions but from leaders. So I believe if you're going to look at a company and are you considering acquiring it, or are you thinking about selling your business? Because it's also, could be in the near future, a great time to be buying also. Great way to grow is growth by acquisition. You've been doing that, Ron. You've got to really have this figured out. I know Jim McKelvey's company who does leadership assessments asks a question, would you like to move from I think to I know? Do you really know that you have the right leadership team to take your company to the next level? And so fundamentally, you have three options. Either tolerate the way they're currently running your business, start developing your existing clients, or start buying and recruiting new talent. You only have three options. Shut up and tolerate the way it is and just be okay with it because you brought them in. Or start strategically developing your talent or go out and buy new talent. This slide ought to be one of the few that you remember from my limited time with you this morning. How many of you are familiar with the book Good to Great, Jim Collins wrote maybe a decade ago? So he went out for a long period of time and studied the great Fortune 100 companies. And what do they all have in common? Shortly after they published the book, like within a year, some of them started to decline. And so all of us are smarter after the fact. So they started a new research project. And the new research project was, well, how did these companies that were great for so long, some of yours are, what happened is started, they started to decline. One of the key findings in the next book, How the Mighty Fall, was do you, a, a key warning sign would be a declining proportion of key seats filled for the, with the right people now and for the future. The key seats. 90% of CEOs I meet do not know the answer, what are your key seats? And we have data that says if you don't have that answer, it will cost you now and in the future. Look at this statistic from Gallup. Only one in 10 leaders have the high talent to effectively manage. One in 10. So if you have a 10 mem member management team, according to their data, now of course, I meet people. John, come on. John, that's not true about my company. John, my company's different. It might be, but since they do this for a few million people, chances are your talent isn't quite as good as you think they are. And I'm talking about leadership talent. Because if you don't have the right people with the steering wheel in their hand, how can you possibly expect to have a business that could effectively be transitioned to somebody else? So I believe one of the things you have to figure out is, can I start to strategically develop the talent I have, and or should I start looking for the next level of talent to take my company to the next level? Or, how many of you are visual? See the little hamster wheel in my hand? little hamster wheel I'm spinning, or just keep doing what you're doing and expect different results. Our message today is about preparation and planning. There are things you can be doing now to add profitability to your business and make your business more valuable for sometime in the short future. I've done this assessment to with probably somewhere between 10 and 20,000 leaders. I speak in front of a lot of audiences, conferences. I'm now a certified speaker in the Vistage organization. And when I ask people at random with no data, what percentage of your leadership team are every day above and beyond extraordinary A performers? What percent occasionally go above and beyond? What percentage of your management team comes to work and does their job? And what percent do you have to kind of micromanage? Using my definition, unscientific. So if we did an assessment of your leadership team, here's what I see consistently consistently. Now ask yourself, 10% of the leadership team are rock stars, 20% are above average, and 70% are average or below. Would you buy that company? 
Because if you do, you're going to have to do some cleaning house. You've got some work to do. Lucy, we've got some work to do. If you're serious, unless you're going to grow to be 130 years old and run your business 60 years from now, you need to understand what talent am I working with today. This is what I see in most organizations. Jim, is this true? You've been doing this for 120 years. Is this true? I'm exaggerating slightly. So why all this talk about leadership? Because if somebody's going to take over your business someday, somebody's going to inherit your baby, you're going to sell it to them, it might be your management team, it might be a strategic buyer, it might be a private equity group, doesn't matter who it is, they're going to look at your leadership team. It's one of the key indicators that will help determine the value or lack thereof of your company if we take you out of the business. Managers with high talent are twice as likely to be engaged. Another statistic from the Gallup study.